This program is underwritten in part by... of life and nowhere else is it felt quite like here in the u.s virgin islands naturally in rhythm it's the most wonderful time of the year the first bank team wishes everyone a happy and safe cruising christmas festival committed to the virgin islands community for 60 years first bank has eight branches across st thomas st john st croix and tortola and viewers like you. The views expressed on this program are not necessarily those of WTJX, its board, staff, or underwriters. Good morning, good morning, and thank you for joining us on this beautiful, beautiful sunny day. Tatsun, how are you doing today? Good morning, good morning, Shaniqua. How are you doing, baby? I am amazing. My name wow. is Shaniqua Robinson, and I'm one of your hosts today with Mr. Dodson James. Dodson James, I'm right here. And we're bringing live beautiful coverage from T WTJX Channel 12. Dodson, this is the Children's Parade. Are you ready for today? Oh, yes, I am. And thank you for introducing oh, It's a beautiful introduction by Chinika. Yes, I'm Dotson James, and I'm excited to be here today. Guess what, man? After two years, and it seemed like three to four, we're finally back with a uh, festival in, 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 in St. Croix. And where are we? We're Downtown. outside. <laughs> we're outside. <laughs> we're outside. And we are in historic, the t in the historic town of Frederick said, beautiful King Street, beautiful Frederick said, Midgey Cummings, Cummings Playground Park right across the street, where the, the people are already set up. Everybody's doing good. People are happy. The children's uh, race is right coming out in front yeah, of us. Yeah, the foot race is starting already. And yeah. That's no. interesting. They're they're not playing with the time today. They're out there on time. Let's hope let's let's, let's hope it transcends into tomorrow. So yeah. oh. I mean, we'll get into tomorrow later. Yeah, on, we'll, right? we'll 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 cross that bridge when we get to it. But definitely kudos to the Kujan Christmas Festival Committee. They're on time. The foot race has started. It is ten AM. It's a beautiful day. Please, please, please be sure to come out. I remember in the beginning they were kind of trying to join the parades together yeah one time and yeah. then they they decided to separate it but you know what you know so why and it's because you know the children's parade does not get the recognition from the community like it should and it we, doesn't you know, and every year you hear the same thing you know that people need to come out more for the kids and we keep saying it here on wtj come on out and support the children because it's very important for the ego number one. Oh yeah definitely it helps the parents you know we can put more interest in what the children are doing and mm -hmm. they also come out don't just wait till for tomorrow to wait when you want to see people while out we and want you to we want the kids to have an opportunity to be able to be recognized and to be happy and be proud of what they do because they're representing not only themselves representing their parents their community they're representing their school yeah. they're representing everything so we're gonna have fun today watching the children as they come back and it's today. a perfect day the sun is hot the sun it, is hot. Stay blazing. hydrated. Stay hydrated. It's blazing. But come out. Come out with your family. Come out with your friends. It's a perfect day just to have a, a nice day out. It's, it's beautiful. There's a ship in town. There's a ship in town. We have tourists the, the, back the, and forth. They're asking questions and they're like, what? There's a parade. So I know a lot of them are going to stop by and, you know, show their support. So we want everyone to come out and do the same as well. I know the good part about it, right? The tourists are walking by in front of us and they're looking at us like as if they got celebrities here. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, I'm not, we're, not, we're not the celebrities. The well, children are. Let me go back to in history a little bit. You were once Miss St. Croix, right? Yes. See, folks, I'm sitting here again with royalty. <laughs> Now, Ms. Shaniqua, you would come by, just give us an example, you would come by in the car, uh -huh. how did you feel when you came by in the car, waving to the waving to people, waving to the, 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 your fans, waving to the community, how did, it, how did it make you feel? In that moment, I was honored. You were honored? Yes, I was honored. Um, I was a girl, 
Oh, okay, I'm from okay. Frederickstead. I'm from okay. the heart of Frederickstead. Um, you know, the corner by Mar- Marley? Yeah. The corner yeah, up there? Yeah. Everyone was out in droves, like waiting for me. It was oh just my like goodness. Oh it my was goodness. it was it was a burst of just pride. Like I was like, wow, I I yeah. was singing great. Like right yeah, now, yeah. and I also think, in that moment, I felt I really felt honored. I was like, wow. And that's how it's supposed to be yeah. coming down. And then you do it in front of the people that you know and and people that love you the and most. Supported me a hundred percent. Yes. So how was the pageantry then compared to now, as as far as missing Court is concerned? Um, you gotta be a little bit more specific with that question. <laughs> in terms of what? <laughs> well, did you have more people participating compared? To, okay, the go, another question is: mm-hmm. Why aren't we getting more contestants for Missing Croy? What, what's your know. opinion? It's a, it's a number of things to me, to be honest. I yeah. mean, first of all, pageants are expensive. I can imagine they are very, very, very expensive, and I mean, sponsorship is a big deal. It's a it's an issue, but of course, we, we we came out the pandemic. Even though we had three girls this year, which three I thought girls. was yeah, which okay. I thought was amazing, yeah. was a beautiful show. We'll touch base on that as the contestants as come, um, come down. Okay. But I think that um, it's definitely money for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very expensive. It's very expensive. It takes a lot to to prepare. You know, to prepare the young ladies. And you know, talking about the young ladies, um, our reigning Miss Sinclair, Renelle Harris, mm-hmm. she's gonna be doing our Instagram takeover, and it is WTJX TV. At WTJX TV. So right now, if you go to Instagram and you go on the Instagram live, you go on the Instagram feed. Our reigning Miss Sinclair, Renelle Harris, is taking over Instagram for WTJX. And she'll be feeding us information. Yeah, yeah. She's gonna be telling them what she's doing, talking about the route, giving her experience. So okay. how you ask me about how I felt? Yeah. They're gonna know firsthand how Renelle is feeling right now. Okay. And we're gonna have interaction with them also. Hopefully. Yeah. Well, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. So we're gonna have interaction with you know we, we got a little ground crew. We're not ready to let you know who they are yet, but we got a little yeah. ground crew. They're warming up. As a matter of fact, I think one of one or two of them was in the, was in the children's race. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see the one I'm going to introduce in the children's race. But that was fun when they came by us, and even even that was was great because every year the children come by, and they are our future stars. And we have we have many of them that participated in this particular uh, race, uh, Shaniqua, and every we have year. one that has 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 gone viral or global, whatever you want to be. be uh, say because at her age, I think she's probably number one or number two in the country. Wow! A young lady. But her, her parents are uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I can't remember their first name right now. Wow! But she started here. I remember her running here, and the whole of 2022. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, she was a star. She was the star. I mean, she was going. She's beating. When you can beat the likes of Jamaica with ease. Oh, wow! Now you know we're doing. Wow! Good. And you know Jamaica have some runners. And you know Jamaica have some serious runners. But guess yeah. what? Sink right have runners too. We got them. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we got them. Yeah, I'm happy that she's putting her putting herself and our name out there as well. Yeah. I mean uh, we're putting us on the map because we do have you know, per capita I don't like to talk about St. Croix. We got some of the most we got more professional athletes out there. Profes- I mean real professional athletes than any place that's per oh, capita. Oh definitely. Whether what regardless of the sport, basketball, baseball, we uh, have some talented races. people. We have some talented, we have some talented people. people. Definitely. We we, we, we can attest to that. Yeah. Yeah. We have talented people. Let me ask you though, another question, though. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not trying to be a school teacher here, but <laughs> how did the pandemic treat you and your family? I mean, we don't want to go back because you know it's not. You know, it's 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 really still around. It hasn't really gone. Yeah. That that, that dreaded disease, whatever you want to call but it. But you're not so funny. You say that. I was. I touched the juve just for a little bit, and I was like, wait, the COVID gone. <laughs> <laughs> COVID gone, just like that. Poof. Look, I'm like, wow. I saw a picture yesterday um, that uh, one of the other news medias had up. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever seen that type of a crowd in a juve like i saw yesterday it was mm-hmm. i mean amazing i came down to get some food from one of the boots in the food sale i had to park up at a cemetery yeah yeah no they're they're definitely supporting the community is supporting the festival we missed it yeah we've been tired we've been thirsty we've been hungry we've been waiting for that chicken leg and johnny cake in the village <laughs> we are we were waiting for this moment okay I so tell you, I tell the cruisers okay. are definitely coming out but we're gonna hold that talk okay. we're gonna hold that thought all right and then we're gonna go down to the street talent let them introduce themselves, let them get acclimated, and then we'll come back and we'll discuss how the pandemic really affected us personally. Personally, okay. okay no so problem. on the street, we have Miss Marlisa George. Let's take it to her. Hi, good morning. Thank you so much, Shaniqua and Dodson. Y'all looking great this morning. It's, it is not hot yet, people. It is not hot yet. Marlisa George here on the street with WDJX. We are here. Reflections of culture and mass and reverie and music for Christian Christmas Festival 2022-2023. These children just ran past yeah. me. I am breathing quite heavily. Just watching the Mustangs run past. The children did a great job. So come out and support them. We'll be walking around and talking to different people. So join me for that. 
that. And also we'll be interviewing all of the beautiful royalty and all of the children as they come down for Children's Parade. <laughs> Two years we outside again that's gonna be our we're gonna we're gonna take away that reflections of culture we outside again we're just gonna dub it that right <laughs> all righty Shaniqua Dodson right back to you all right thank you thank you very Thanks, much Melissa. Melissa. listen last year mm -hmm. into this year WTJX is now celebrating 50 years the big 50, 50 years yes. of service to this community yes the best television station the Virgin Islands has ever had and I say that, you know, the reason why I say stuff like that is because uh -huh. when I say things like that, mm -hmm. they give me a chance again to work next year. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. No, gotcha. but seriously, folks, 50 years after well, that. Well, I mean, to be, to have a business or to run a business in the Virgin Islands and to have it that long and not just to have it. Right. For it to be a staple right. in the community. A staple. It says a lot. And you know, it says a lot. And it's where they came from. Oh, I, me I remember the little the little studio up in up in uh, Chandler's Wharf, up in Gallows Bay. See, I don't remember that. that you 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 going dated? I going? I I know about now. <laughs> I mean, I, I remember didn't know about back then. You you gotta be the historian. Yeah, too. you gotta I, tell me about that part. Oh, that was a little. It was a little a little room in the corner, mm -hmm. and there were like two rooms inside, and you know you you had to produce, you had to mix, you had to do everything in that in one, one area. Room. In one room, and then you had you, you did all the shows. I was I was introduced to, to WTJX because I was uh, helping my sister Marie James. Now, wow. Senator, now Senator Maurice James, uh, when she um, when she was doing a show called Topics, okay, and she called me and one day she said, "Listen, I can't do the show. You need to come in and do the show for me." I said, well, "What am I going to be doing the show? What, what do I talk about?" But anyway, we had guests and it, it went over well. But that goes to show you that from way back when, to just to find a spot up there, it was, the it was growth, fantastic. The yeah, growth, the growth, the growth. Look at where they are and now. Look where they are now. I remember when Tanya was talking about they were going to move into that big building we have now it's a two-story building uh -huh, yes. that can house the, the, our, our, our big truck that we have the, produ the production truck mm -hmm. and it is into every other vehicle we, that we that we um, that we use mm -hmm. WTJX has everything that they, they, we you know they're self-sufficient they, yes I mean Not we right. can broadcast from one island to the next we can set up we can do anything we want we've done horse racing we've done like you said we do the parades legislative stuff mm -hmm. the, the inauguration for the governor i'm talking too much you go ahead no 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 no, no. <laughs> you like i said you're the historian this is your department because you know when the pageant girls run come down and the pageantry start oh, yeah you um, know I'm, I, I'm i'm not trying to take over i'm gonna I lean mean, on you heavily yeah, yeah. so you, you you know that's we, that's why we're partnering you, you know you have the yin and the yang where you you know where you fall off i pick up where i fall off you pick up and so we also have we're we also producing two shows today because we're doing a parade yes and we're also producing the beauty, folks, and the beast. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's <Sorry>. thin. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyway, but, but also today, because it is 2023, mm -hmm. today makes 20 years that I'm actually doing work with Channel 12. Well, congratulations. 20 years. Then I was driving on today. I was like, wait a minute. Wow. This been, I started in 2003. Actually, I was sitting in a barber's chair, and mm -hmm. I got that phone call. to. Uh, no, I'm, I'm going to take it back. I got sitting in a barber's chair, and I got a call to come do the parade. Uh-huh. So it's now 20 years of doing the parade. Wow. And of course we missed two, but I'm going to count to 20 because well, I started in 2000. You were already unavailable and, and willing to do it. Oh, yeah. yeah okay, yeah, so that's yeah, all that matters. Yeah. But I was scared. I was scared. I was like, damn, I mean. You didn't do doing, it in so long. Doing the, not doing this, so doing the parade of all things. I mean, how do you keep talking and talk? Because people don't realize this is a very difficult job. It is. You know, it really yeah, is. Yeah, it's, very it, difficult it's, job. it's one thing to look, but you have to sound, you know, you have to be articulate, you have to be engaging, yeah. okay. you know, so. Well, let's take it down to Melissa. She's going to be doing one of our first of many interviews for Hi. this day. Hi, good morning. Here with Shermel, sitting here so beautifully, here for the parade festivities. So how does it feel to be back outside again, Shermel? I love it. Who would have ever thought that after those two years of being inside that we are outside again i love it so is this have you only been taking part of parade or do you have you been doing other activities uh i did some um i'm enjoying everything i think shamari and his team did a wonderful um 70th anniversary of festival kudos to him and his staff wonderful job well done Awesome, awesome. You heard it here. Mr. Mel said it. 70th Jubilee Festival. It's going wonderfully. All righty. Thank you so much, Shaniko and Dotson. Thank you, Melissa. Thanks, Melissa. I don't think a lot of people realize, uh, Shaniko. Thank you so much. What, I um, put you too much on the spot. What I have, too much on the spot. What, what was done with respect <laughs> to putting this thing together, um, getting the boots in place. I mean, I was here, mm -hmm. being at a working public works, we were kind of instrumental in preparing the park and not. In the parking area for the for the boots and everything to be um, 
um, to be placed. Put in place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's like 30 something boots. Then you have the Coney Island behind. Yes. I mean, it, everything is compressed. It's a production. One. It's a production. It's a that not only that the bandstand, the bandstand. like driving down and yeah. see it being constructed is yes. like wait how do they even like painted decorated everything i'm like yo i mean it's, it, it takes a lot of work and we definitely have to shout out the usbi division of festivals oh yeah um, they are doing their thing you know we came back out of the two-year pandemic two year hiatus, and yeah. you know they came yeah. back swinging you know all the events were, were great the village nights were amazing so I just think that we need to just definitely, if you see them on the street, hail them up, tell them thank you, thank you, you know, because they, they, they did an amazing job. Amazing job. And I want to thank, I mean, I, w I want to take special, uh, say a special thank you uh, to, to a wonderful work that he did to Shamari. Shamari, yes. Shamari. Shamari has been definitely. And that's Shamari Haynes, Shamari, by the way. So Mr. Shamari Haynes. <laughs> Mr. Shamari Haynes. <laughs> He's going to be like really yelling, I'll be that professional, but you know, Shamari. <laughs> so he's so just like <laughs> you. <laughs> you know, he's going to be like, really? You, you know, you're not doing that. No, we're going to get him. You know. Ian called me several times. Ian Turnbull called me several times. Once. I said, look, you know, we're going to do what we have to do for Festival of St. Croix. When, when, when he called the job for me, I said, we're going to work as much as, as much as we can. We're gonna go as hard as we can. Yes. Time is not as uh, is not is, it was not our friend at the time, to be honest with you. And uh, we had some some meetings here with Shamari with mm -hmm. respect to the parking area. You know, to be honest with you, it, uh, it also shows that this year's festival also shows that there's still not enough parking in this in sync right for it, listen, wherever you hold it, the festival. Listen, the Frederick said, Christian said, no parking in East, enough yeah, parking in West. Yeah. But I mean, I think that the festival is growing. I feel that like it's growing. A lot of people are traveling. They're coming yes, they're in. Coming home for it. And yeah. okay, we we gonna talk about that on another time too about traveling and coming in. But okay, okay, yeah, that's. Yeah, I just that's, feel that's like the, the support. Itself. Yeah, that's a whole nother ball game. But I feel like the support for the festival this year, it's you know, it's a lot. It's a lot. You know, so. I, I, I want to encourage everybody to just continue coming because I feel like this is the start of many more. It's going to be even bigger and better next year. Bigger and better. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, I just want to remind all, all listening audience, you can also watch us if you don't have a television that brings, picks up Channel 12 or a network that picks up Channel 12. You can look at us on, on streaming WTGX.org. Yes. And um, as a matter of fact, I was watching during this week. There were so many activities this week. Inauguration on Monday. One in St. Tom in St. John on Tuesday, one in St. Croix. By the way, I did the one in St. Croix here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was MC for that one. So I, I, I had a little practice with the microphone over the weekend. But, okay. you know, Channel 12 has brought so many different of our um, historical things with respect to the parades, with respect to the inauguration, with respect to... Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm sure we have, we have footage of, um, of Juve. And yeah. I know we're going to have footage of yeah. Juve. And we're footage. giving the community a front row seat. Yeah, and, and you're going to see it right here on Channel 12. Why? Because we're simply the best. You know, there's no question about it. Okay, we're that's in really best. walking to, for another 20 years. This is, <laughs> this is year one with me for Channel 12. <laughs> so I'm taking notes. So maybe I could be 20 years deep now because I, I'm taking notes. I'm taking notes. <laughs> no, but it's, it's great for real. It's, it's really great. And guess what? We, we have some special visitors. Now this, this is probably going to creep some people out. That, mm -hmm. that probably going to want to take in a parade. Yes. Snakes. <laughs> That's it. On that note, we have another interview with Melissa. Melissa, take it away. <laughs> All righty. So we're here with Mr. Tony Messer. Tony, what are you doing? Ricky Messer, I'm so sorry. What are you doing uh, out here today? Actually, morning, everybody. Happy f festival, St. Croix <laughs> Festival. I'm actually here setting up my tents for the parade, you know, for today and tomorrow. Come out, you know, it's an annual thing where you try to get to sports park and, you know, pay for a spot. And, you set it up and you have one of the best views of the parade, you know, right before the, the judges stand. Yes, this is like prime real estate. I'm going to have to get that information from you so that I could know how to get up here and, and view it. So is this something that you do? Is this a family custom? Yes, it is. Um, we've been doing it maybe for like six years for me. Some people have been doing it longer. But, you know, you try to rush get into Sports Park from actually from February. I have been inquiring about, you know, when the spots are going to be available, you know, for payment. And, you know, they did it late this year, but it worked out. I got there early one morning and paid for my spot. And here it is, you know, have my spot for the parade. And, you know, I love that because you did it for the children's parade <laughs> and you did it for the adults parade. I thank you so much for supporting. And just for anyone that is hesitant on coming out to the children's parade today, what would you tell them? Uh, the kids are the future. You know, we have to support them. Awesome. Have to. Thank you so much. You enjoy the parade. You got prime real estate <laughs> VIP seating. <laughs> All righty. We're going to get that information so we too could be right on the front lines. More from Shaniko and Dotson. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. That's a good Thank interview. Thank you. That's East first. That's East coming to West and West coming to East. Bring it to St. Croix together. But that's it. I'm not going to lie. If you look, 
the, the streets are filling up nicely already. Filling up nicely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think the children are definitely going to have a good yes, turnout yes, today. Yes, yes, yes. I, sh- I, sh- I really think so. Yeah, I hope so. I think so. Yeah, when we start, and, and I think we kick off, well, I'm not going to say that because I don't want to put nobody in the spot. Because <laughs> they probably say, but that's not time you said we're going to start around this particular time. I don't know. We're gonna, uh-huh. All I know is that we're going to start. But, you know, I, as I look around, I see a lot of familiar faces that in the same spot that the, the last the last viewer or the last uh, uh, person that spoke to Melissa was talking about. Mm-hmm. About as far as setting up their tents and whatnot, setting up their particular area. Yes. This is a tradition for them also. Yes. You know, to yes. come down and set up the day before or the, the morning of to get ready for this parade. The base for the tents were already in place. They're already So in everyone place. was kind of like holding their spot from the night before. Yeah, yeah. That's important. Like across the street from us, you can see the tents are going up. Yes. The tents are going yes. up. The strollers yes. are out. The, there's a little child over there napping already. Like, oh, God. Poor yeah, fella. No, not poor fella. <laughs> I feel sorry for his mom because when he gets up, <laughs> you know, it's... It's fully it's charged. All over, yeah, it's all fully over. charged. Yeah. Well, you know what's fully good about charged. this? Is good about this. I remember now. This is how Fredericksen has changed a little bit. Okay. Two, three years ago, Midri Cummings Park was Midri Cummings Park. Now yes. Midri Cummings Park is Midri Cummings Park. Listen, a this proud, park is so beautiful yes, and heavily used. When I tell you beautiful, it is well deserved and it is it is well constructed. Yes. I I really like the the um. The banners inside where the sponsors were able to right. like, put the names and stuff on it. It has a touch of home. It's 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 classy. It's 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 fun. It's beautiful on the eyes. It was just well constructed. I definitely have to shout out all the volunteers and everybody that came and assisted. Oh yeah, that's another I thing. Because I remember, yeah, yeah it yeah. definitely took a community. I think we're. We, I, I, sometimes I feel like we're losing the essence where it says it takes a village, but in but that moment took it village. took. Listen, the entire village. It was such a beautiful project to watch from beginning to end. Right. And the children are in there having a time. I ain't gonna lie, I don't go in there too. No, I don't blame <laughs> I don't you. I, don't blame you. I walk in there and it's, it's the, nice. You can play music because it's a yes. balance and stuff like that. In it's there. so different. It's different. It's not, it's not your traditional swings and no, slider and stuff like no. that. It's something different to do. It's very entertaining and it's stimulating. It, it gives them different activities to mm-hmm. do. It, mm-hmm. it's, it's exciting for me as an adult. Well, I can't adult big kid slash big no, kid. No, but it's but exciting, period. It's You're really, right. It really right. is. And I just wanna to shout everyone out that was a part of it because they did a great job and it and it, it, it sends a red message because the person that it was that it was named after was a famous famous baseball player as far as we're concerned who grew up in the little leagues and all the way towards um, professional baseball um, you know I think he, and he was also instrumental in winning a uh, World Series championship with the team he played against, Midri Cummings. And Midri, you know, we want to say thank you for putting us on a map of perspective baseball. And we have built something as a territory that honors the greatness of this young man who actually came home during this, the same time when, when, when the park was being constructed. And he was able to give a hand and, uh, and help me handle yes, himself and build it. Yes. So, and I think I saw on Facebook that they didn't even know it was him. They didn't know. No, as a matter of fact, that he, he was kind of undercover. <laughs> he always does that. I mean, he walks in and he's like, "Oh, you're the, you're the, you're the great major comics, and you got to put a handle on certain people." Yeah, he's yes. a great major comics. He won a World Series. Yes. He was instrumental. So he was like. No, I just made you coming. No, no, well, no, no, no. normally, pe- normally people like that are very humble. Yeah, but you know yeah. what I like? What I like, and I'm noticing with the community, he's alive. Yes, he's here. You gave he's him his able flowers. to while he's alive. Right, right. The same with the festival village. Yes, Daddy Jones. Daddy Jones. Like I am so happy that we are honoring these living legends. And you know, you know that they are alive and they're able to to see and experience and feel the love in in in, in you know. As, as part of the community, I'm I'm, I'm no, glad that we're doing that. I agree with you because when I told him, I, I you know he bowls, he and I we bowl in you know bowling league on Monday. That's and what do you not do? I, I, that's a good question. What do you not do? <laughs> so I tell him, I said, man, it's an honor to just be standing up here next to you in the village. He said, he just looked, he said, thank you very much. I mean, so, so humble. humble. <laughs> you know, some people walk around and say, well, I dissolve it. You know, it's about time to give me something. Ooh. No, he was so humble. Ooh. I mean, he was so nice about it. And so, I mean, and you know, every time you, you know, I see him in interviews and, you know, and whoever's interviewing, whether it's, whether it's another, you know, another media outlet, mm-hmm. he takes it with such stride, you know, it's like, you know, I, I want to, and you know, it goes back because of who raised him, his mother. So gotcha. She, you know, what amazes me about, about Daddy Jones is that every place he goes, his mother is right next to him. Very supportive. Every Monday night in the bowling alley, she's there. <laughs> I mean, it's not like it's not like he's fifteen. She's 16. his biggest fan. Yeah, she's right there, you know. But he was also raised by by a great. His father was a great musician, oh, def- also well, and a great definitely. person in general. I mean, so a I, legend, birth yes, a legend. Yes, and he, and then his sons come in. Every it's like every. It's a musically inclined family. Wow, I mean, it's amazing. It's a musically. Yeah. I think the other night in the village, his sons 
had the honor of playing with him too. No kidding. Yeah, it's okay. like a, he played with his dad. His dad played with him. The son. Everybody is like, whoa. Wow. Yeah. So wow. I would wow. I wouldn't doubt in another couple of years his son is being bestowed the same honor as well. Yeah. And you know that's just 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 humbling as a just parent, like you know, to be able to pay it yeah. forward and pass it on to your offspring. And like you said, Daddy Jones is not an old fella. He's a young fella. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very young fella. I hear a lot of noise in the background, but that's okay. That's that has nothing to do with us. Yeah, nothing, nothing. I just, I just love another tents going up. These people are not playing. I seen the food tables coming out. Like they're, 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 they're getting ready for today. A lot of time and effort was put in today, and. I, I, I ain't gonna lie. At first, I was a little nervous. I was like, "Oh my gosh! I hope they come out and support the kids." But if you can see, people are coming people in are droves. Coming. People like are coming. People, people are coming, coming in droves, yeah. and I think that by the time the parade makes its way down here to us, that would be awesome. Sure, we are. You know, we got. Of course, of course. What would a parade be without? We can we call him. Not funky man, um, culture, culture man. Culture man. Yeah, he's of course you know, folks. You see, we're not we're not ready to put him on screen yet. No, because I like his outfit too. Yeah, yeah, nice he's good. and bright yes, and good. colorful. Because I know for sure if history repeats itself, he's by midday he's thing. going to annoy me. He, I, yeah, he, he, can, he can never get my name right. You know, what I'm saying? He can never, well, let's see if he, he gets mine. Dawson. Right. Can he asks me. He asks me my name and. He asked me my name, and I was like, okay, let's see yeah. if he butcher it. All right. But we're not going to get to him. Melissa has an interview right now, so let's take it away to her. All righty. Culture, culture man. Uh -oh. We having a ball. Oh. We having a ball. Oh. No, we're not we ready for ball. Oh. Well, we, we uh, ball. he started already. One, two, we're we're cutting into culture, check. man. Microphone check. Oh, yes. One, two, one, two. Microphone check. Microphone check. One, two, one, two. Microphone check. Microphone check. One, two, one, two. Microphone check. <laughs> what is my friend or our friend doing? Let's take it down to Melissa. I think Melissa has someone, another interesting individual that she wants to talk to. Go ahead, Melissa. Melissa is not paying attention to me, but that's okay. But uh, we'll be all right. Um, something I was going to talk about. Okay, let's, let's just try one more time. Let's go down to Melissa. Melissa? Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm here with former Ving Adjutant General, the General Rivera. And uh, General Rivera, you are here with your grandbabies, your wife, enjoying today's festivities. How does it feel to be in a parade and you sit on the side and not having to be walking in the parade? I've had so many parades in my lifetime that sitting back here enjoying uh, the people come down participating in the parade. That's what I like to do. Instead of having to lead it in the front, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sit back, relax, you know, and enjoy the uh, the music and the performances. Nice. So you have been here. You said many parades, and again, I just want to encourage you and thank you for coming out for the children's parade as well. But is it because you had your grandbabies, or you just love coming out for the parade? I just love not because of my grandbabies. They are an addition. But we've been here close to about twenty two years. Oh, nice. So almost every parade that you've seen uh, shown on the television, we have sat right here set up in this area and, we, and then we, grandbabies came and we just make sure that they have some room to watch it parade nice nice so uh we've been out COVID has kept us a little bit away from a lot of this uh, have you been able to take a part in any of these things or you like me we, we stay away from the or have you been getting a part of the mass and the reverie well i've been uh, back and forth to the all the different acti activities uh, I am. I got my two booster shot plus my two vaccinations. So I'm good to go. <laughs> Have you been uh, to the village and taking part of any of the village events? Yes, I've been to the village last night and on Monday night. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Well, I am looking forward. I think my best part is to see uh, the majorettes. Oh, yeah. I love to see the majorettes when they're so little. What about you? Uh, my thing is the Moko Jumbies. The kids fly off when they see the Moko Jumbies come out. As a matter of fact, if you are in any place around you and the Moko Jumbies pass by, they be grabbing on to the gate just to see them dance. Amazing. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Anna Rivera. Before I go, I want to say hi to my soldiers and airmen and their families. I wish them a happy new year. Make sure you're healthy, take good care of yourselves, and smile wherever you go. Thank you for your service. Thank you so much. More uh, coming uh, coverage on the Cruiser Christmas Festival Parade with Shaniqua, myself, and Mr. Dotson James. <laughs> Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Melissa. <laughs> we like that one. We're going to go up to George in a second, but I want to say, just for just, just for educational purposes, Ving 
Means verse now, nice. thanks God. Yes. So, Melissa, I know you're in the garden. You expect everybody to know it, but I'm going to reprimand you on that one. I'm only kidding. <laughs> I'm only kidding. Anyway, we're going to take it out with Mr. George Silka. Let me see if we can get things right today. George, take it away, buddy. All right, let's go. All right. Yes, how we doing? How we feeling? We are here because we are here because we are here because we are here. Look at this, St. Croix. I feel like I'm back home again. You're surely Georgia G. Chad Silica, culture man. And of course, you know it's all about WTJX coverage of this beautiful festivity of who? The children them. It's all about the children today. And we are paired by Cloud Marco School. Now, trust me. It's quite a considerable walk down there to the main parade route. So when you see these children come down in the square, be excited that they're down there and they have a lot of energy to keep on going because it's a nice little walk. And who do we have right here? Come, Miss St. Croix. How you doing? Get him a little model. Get him a little model. And here we have Miss St. Croix. She is wearing a cultural <laughs> dress. And it is just beautiful. It is just nice. How are you feeling today? I am super excited for everything that's about to happen today. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> so tell me, what's your name? Give the people your whole background information. My name is Renelle Harris, and I'm your 70th anniversary Miss St. Croix Festival Queen. And I'm here today for the Children's Parade. That's a big one, 70th. Yes. That's a memorable one. Yes, very much big anniversary. With this is, I'm the first queen after the pandemic, so this is a very big title, a very big platform, and I'm just super excited excited for everything that's coming the, um, in the future for this year. This is the queen of we outside. <laughs> we outside this year without a doubt. Tell me what some of the things that you missed are you happy to engage in? The food, of course. The food fair, the village. I didn't get to go to Juve yesterday because I was a part of the food fair. However, I will be in both parades today and tomorrow. So stay tuned because you're going to see a lot of me. All right. Nice, nice, nice. Well, we don't want to hold you back. Any tips for the children as they come down the route? Just keep smiling, keep going, just let them have your all. It's it's about you today, it's your day, and just show them everything that you've been practicing for all these weeks, probably months with some of these groups. I know I practice with Rising Stars, I've been practicing with them since about August, September, so I know that you guys are putting a lot of work, and I can't wait to see what everything that on the road today. You heard it from the queen <laughs> herself. Thank you very much for this yeah. interview. Thank you so much. And I hope you guys have a blessed festival season or the rest of it. And happy holidays. Happy New Year. Happy everything. And just have a great day and enjoy today's festivities. You see, right. only on Channel 12, nobody else, nobody else giving you the Cloud Marco starting point interviews. Channel 12 alone. Keep it locked and loaded with us and share and tell a friend. All right. Back to you. You call the name, George. Call thank name. you, George. But thank you, Renelle. That was beautiful. Beautifully done. What's your um, interaction with um, her? Huh? What was your interaction with her? Oh, I assisted um, Renelle. I, I coached her. I was her, her speaking and oh, speech you, coach. You think I want to ask her, right? I'm sitting here like a proud mom. <laughs> like, yes. Yeah, talk, girl. Let him. Let him know. She spoke well. She spoke yeah, she well. speaks very well. She yeah. was a she was a joy to work with. A little hard headed sometimes. That, but that's but that makes a lot that of tears. A good one. She cried a lot of tears. She but whew, so how were you? She how, could cry. How, how were you able to 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 get her? Was that because of? I wouldn't say lack of confidence. What, what, no, what, no, what no. She was that? very confident. But yeah. I mean. Some people are just a little more softer. Emotional. Yeah, emotional. Yeah, yeah. a little more emotional. And I rough. I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a rough person no, to man. deal with in that capacity. I, I, I can't say that. Uh, tch, boy, <laughs> in that capacity where you need to be a certain way and this is what I'm looking for and this is what it needs to be, I'm a, I'm a stickler. Oh, okay, okay. So okay, I know okay, I, I could come across kind of harsh or so a little now, rough, but now, she okay. handled it very well. <laughs> you were missing, Croy. Back so, in the day. Back in the day. Now, mm -hmm. you're talking about you were, you were rough in the center. Did you listen when you ran for Miss Croy? I had a choice. You did? I didn't have a choice. So I who had was to your listen. coach? I had to listen. Hanif, I work with Mr. Hanif James. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's nice. And um, Mr. Raja Gary um, made my clothing. Mm -hmm. But I, Shalita Schuster of Music mm -hmm. Emotion. Shalita Schuster of Music Emotion. She don't play. I danced with her since I was three. Wow. And speaking of anniversaries, Music Emotion is celebrating their 40th year this year. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. That been that so we're, yeah, we'll yeah. touch base on that later too. But you're talking about discipline and structure definitely got that from her that's but familiar. before we get off the topic of Renelle, i just want to remind everyone that she is taking over instagram right Thank now you very much for reminding so wtjx tv at wtjx tv so like she that. is live she's there she's giving her commentary so yes we have a reporter up there george is giving you that but Renelle is giving you the inside scoop her first hand, you know, yeah, exactly want, how she's feeling right now, what's happening. Because I want to actually find out the atmosphere that George is feeling. Because George can get a good pulse of what's going on. Yes. He's doing this set too long. And, that's, and I'm hoping that the asphalt body foot to that too. Oh, listen, I ain't getting into <laughs> politics with you and George. I'm not getting in that. Okay, let's go down to Melissa. Melissa has another deal with somebody who's quite dressed up. Take it away, Melissa. Hi. 
Hi, good afternoon, good morning. I'm trying to speed the day along. You know what it is? It's the it's the outfit. It's beautiful. You're looking gorgeous, Karen. Thank you, Thank you so much, Melissa. Oh, you are dressed with your reverie, your mask, your music. You ready? You have it all together. It's a cultural day. It's cultural day. Yes, yes. <laughs> so tell me, what are you looking forward to today for the Christmas parade? Oh, the wow. Christmas parade. I'm excited because I'm looking forward to see what our children have to offer. I'm looking forward to see what our community members have put together. We're celebrating culture, and there's nothing more beautiful than that now being in education and you seeing your students out here did you did you get to see them racing in the beginning not yet okay. um, because I, I just want to be surprised I love the surprises and so I purposely did not go like when I entered go towards the front okay. because I love to see when they're coming down and they're doing their routines what they practice and it's so important that we instill this pride in our students that they know who they are they know where they come from and they enjoy celebrating it to pass it on to posterity I love that and again I'm a size 16, so thank you. <laughs> Appreciate you. <laughs> thank you so much, Karen. More coming from the street for Cruising Christmas Festival Children's Parade. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you. See some emergency vehicles going by? Yes, yes, yes. We're, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. A tow truck. I park good, so they ain't going to mess with me today. <laughs> I, I park good, too. <laughs> so you, you're admitting to some illegal parking during the season? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I can't talk. I can't talk at all. I, I parked in the, the designated parking lot today, though. I did. I think last night I came up this way, and they were like, that's a one-way. I'm like, listen, I can't turn around now. So <laughs> I ended up parking literally right here in front of the park. I was like, look, I'm going to I, I gonna have to take this this L tonight. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I, I understand parking was has been pretty rough throughout the festival. But you know what? And I'm going to say this, yeah. So what if we're inconvenienced for, just for once, just to have fun? We're going to be, not everything cannot be perfect. Perfect, yes. You know, that's but, understood. Um, but we don't, so we've got somebody watching us here. We feel like celebrities. <laughs> you know what I mean? just, 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 let's just give them the smile. <laughs> How you doing, Hi. buddy? Welcome to St. Croix. <laughs> He's like, from what's happening? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. He looked like he just came from the beach. You know, what amazes me is how much fun and... People really come off these boats and they love St. Croix. Uh, St. Croix is a gem. You know, I, was, I had the opportunity. St. Croix is, is, a, is amazing. It's yeah. beautiful. And I'm not just saying that because I'm from here. I live here or I've represented here. St. Croix, the history, the culture, it's unmatched. Yeah, that's it's right. It's unmatched. We, I, are, we are top notch. I'm going to show you how good we are as a people oh, and yeah. how beautiful we are as an island. We have been visited by the president of the United States of America, George Biden himself. Okay. All right. And I had an opportunity to speak to one of the um, the Secret Service guys. Which is I'm sure you did because I had like a hot, like like how much yeah. five six hundred of them. At least, at least. <laughs> but it, it was so good because he talked about the kind of reception that they got here from us as a people. Yes, it, they, we were, we were yeah. but we're always welcoming. Uh, yeah, we, I we're mean, always like, gracious to, to our guests. He was locked out of his vehicle. Aye. He had, in other words, in, in, to get to the front seat, he had to go to the back seat. So I saw that and I rushed over and I opened up the door because you know he. Opened the door from inside, so I pulled it open. I said, mm -hmm. I could have gotten shot just by rushing out <laughs> to the car, right? Yeah. So he was like, Oh, thank you, sir. You guys, you guys are amazing. You guys are amazing. You, you just you just never stop, you never seem to get enough for helping us. I said, Aww. Thank you so much. That's Stay good. from Miami, him and his wife. They're secret service folks. That's good. And he said when he gets back to Miami, immediately and probably returning to Miami, he's gonna book a flight to come back to St. Croix because he wants to experience everything about St. Croix. Not just guarding the president, but be able to walk around and meet people and have a wonderful time That's with them. That's amazing. So, people of St. Croix, you have done yourself That's a tremendous amazing. job again. That's you know, good. Hats off to you. I love my island. Yeah, me too. I love my island. You can't tell me nothing about no, St. Croix. Exactly. And, you know, we go... You know, but, you know, we, you know, we Crucians, we like that. We go talk about St. Croix, you know. But don't come from where you're coming from and say nothing about St. No, Croix, you know. No, <laughs> the place, man. You can't, <laughs> you can't talk about, you can't talk about St. Croix. I will watch at all. No, you can't come we, we, we will complain about the potholes, but you don't. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Let me do it. I, and, and we think about that. We know part of that. And, and don't bring up patrol because they're going they, they go, to jump at me. Yes, I'm responsible for taking care of the patrols. And we're going to get out of them covered eventually. So that's part of it. Oh, here's a dog. That's it, no, sir. We're we going to have a talk after this. We're we going to chat after this. I ain't going to put you on the spot. <laughs> no, no, dude, please. Not today. I don't think people look. I'm out having a wonderful day. Nothing about the job today. You know? <laughs> you know it's it's going to be a great day. It's going to be a great day. And, you know, um, something. Do you know what the theme is? I, I can't remember. <laughs> I can put you in a spot because I just cleared myself. Oh my gosh! That's <laughs> it. You didn't. I just cleared. I do it. I have it. I have it. Well, it, it, it. Reflections of culture, music, mass, and revelry. Mm -hmm. Cujun Christmas Festival, 
2023. All right. Reflections of culture, music, like mass, and revelry. <laughs> Wait, I'm hearing George. Wait. I'm okay. hearing George. George you know what, George? Is George is like, you know what? I ain't waiting for y'all. Yeah. Let's get to George. Because Where is George sounds like he has some action happening right now. Okay. Okay, George. George, we're waiting on you, George. That was really like that. Stand by, stand by. You have to make a Stand by. No? Okay, say no more. Hey, I'm going to tell you what, boy. I tell you, this is just like a parade right here. And it's all about the children. So I'm interested to know how the children feeling. And just so you guys know, because this is brand new for some of you guys wondering where I am. Claudio Marco School. This is the official starting point. Poor George. George is having a fight. Not, not a real fight. But he's having fun. And we want to try to find out. I, I need to find out from George the atmosphere because it seems like it's, it seems it's like high the, energy. Yeah. But then George a is a building. high energy person too. That's true. So, George sounds like he up there hyping them, getting them ready for the parade. <laughs> could be, could you know be. his, his energy is, wait, see? He sounds like he's happening again. Let's go back to George. <laughs> but you know, I just see the majorettes. That's and what's your favorite part? What 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 do you look forward? To? Parades? Yes. As as much as I love the majorettes because they're very consistent. That's oh, the yeah. best, that's that's the, the beauty of the majorettes. You know, you know exactly where you're gonna get in. The discipline, the professionalism the, of, oh, of it. But definitely. then there's also a little bit more hype that they that that they give to you, and mm -hmm. um, and that's great. But my favorite part of parades, the steel pan. That's my favorite part. I, I just, I just love, I just love when they come down yes. and they, and especially Rising Star, they do such a thing where they, they make you want to jump out your seat. Yeah, the music you know? is electrifying. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's contagious. You can't help it. And you know, before the pandemic again, you had Lumaco who had a steel pan orchestra. You had St. Mary's. You had all these different little groups beginning yes. to do steel pan. And they were actually competing against the Rising Star. They didn't have the numbers. No, but, but they, they, were were they were good. They were good. They were good. But you know what my, my hope is for next year? I remember each school having a troop. Yeah, yeah. I remember each school having a, a set of participants. That's, that's what it's supposed I would, to be. I would yeah. love to see for next year's festivities that each school have a, 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 a troop or, or, or entry in the parade. Yes. I want us to go back to the days where we had floats. Okay. We had floats in the parade. We had floats in the parade. And we'll know, talk about it. Hold on again. Let's go back to George one more time. And the judge, if you don't play, play right this time, we this double deal. Okay. <laughs> We are here by Cloud Marco School. This is the official starting point of the parade. And of course, today. What is it? Yes, you truly really George G. Chan Silicon. Culture, man. And I tell you something. This is the most wonderful place you could be right now on parade day for the children. Over here on the big island of St. Croix. Cloud Marco School is the starting point. The first time I've ever been up here. And I tell you what, it's like a little village or something going on here with children. But let me tell you something. You know who's ready to take the parade, Ralph? Selena with Gabriel. St. Croix Major Reggie ready? Yeah! St. Croix Major Reggie ready? Yeah! Aye, 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 yeah, they're ready indeed. And right here, we have a very shy, but definitely not afraid to speak up on behalf of the children them today. You guys ready to come down the parade route today, aren't you? Yes, we sure are. We've been practicing very hard, and the girls are ready to showcase their talents. Nice, nice. Tell me, give me a little um, idea. How long does a practice take? Um, One session. Usually, like, before like during september october november we practice like every sunday but coming close to the parade when we when they don't have school it's every day from two to four and then six to nine and stuff like that so so uh, the parents as well as the children happy for this day to come yep mm -hmm. <laughs> without a doubt well thank you so very much hey say quite major reds yeah you're hearing a tear you're hearing a tear pot can we get you excuse me please excuse me please Excuse me, oh, that, and I love the outfits. You see the outfits? They're about 10,000 strong. Dang. What do you say? They're wearing the same thing. They're wearing the same <laughs> thing. That's called uniform. You ladies ready to go down the street today? Yeah! You see the energy? They won't let the big children them have all the fun. I like that. What's your name? Catalea. Name? Yes, Charlize Pizarro. Name? Teja Day. Name? Hey, you guys gonna do good today, I can tell. Okay? I want you to look at the camera. Everybody just wave. If you're ready, say yeah. yeah! Oh my goodness. This Oh, who do we have here? Commissioner of Commissioners. 
are you? How are you? How are you I doing? I am well. I am well. Happy festival to everyone. And it's always a pleasure to be on the big island. Yes, sir. To enjoy. And I have my t-shirt for my t-shirt troop. And it's, uh, we're reveling in the science of soca. And so we have about 40 strong students coming down with some adults. And we're celebrating. And this shows the back of the t-shirt, what we stand for. And this with, with me today is Deputy Commissioner Dr. Charles Well. And so we're excited to be here to celebrate with you guys and looking forward to a wonderful parade. Well, look, the children are definitely ready for today, without a we're doubt. Ready too. How, ready. how does that make you feel, you know, knowing that, you know, I, I yeah. guess the majority of the children have come down the road, they're yours, they're yeah, your children. So yeah. how does that make you feel? We're public education proud. That's what we are. And our children are spread throughout different troops. And we're just looking forward to celebrating our children. That's and right. So if you're not there yet, come on down. The parade has not begun. And we're looking forward to great participation from the community as we support our children, our investment, our future. Look at these faces. How could you not be here? Come on. Yeah. I mean, come on. So, come you ready? Yeah. <laughs> Back to you. They're ready. They're ready. I, I, told you, George, ready. I told you, George, have a way of transferring that magnetic energy. I, I love that. I, I told you. I've never seen such energy. Yeah, we have to yeah. shout out the Virgin Islands Department of Education for participating in the parade. Yes. And, you know, yes. they say she has, she has over 40 people, so I'm looking forward to seeing them. But as we, we start seeing Kwai Majorettes, yes. you know, they're, they're actually the Grand Marshals for today's parade. The today's Grand parade. Yeah, yes. that, that's, and that, that yes. in and of itself is an honor also. We're going to come back to that conversation. Let's take it down to Melissa. She has the director of ITMA, yeah, Dara Jashin. Go ahead, Melissa. In the picture, yeah. All righty, so I'm here with Director Jashin. How are you doing today? Oh, fantastic. What a great day to come out and enjoy the children's carnival today. Most definitely. So you were walking up the street, so you, you, you want to get it from the beginning. I like that. Very much so. Also, I want to check sure my, my team is set up, the Department of Health is set up, VIP. We're all set, ready to go to enjoy a fantastic day. The weather is here. Everybody should come out and enjoy carnival today for the children. Awesome. So tell any safety tips you want to share with anyone here coming out and enjoying Carnival today? Well, if you're here for a while, bring some water and bring some shade, bring some of your sunglasses, a hat. You're going to be in the sun for a while. So please be prepared, bring some water, but enjoy the day and have a fantastic day with your family. Thank you so much, sir. You enjoy the day. Thank you so All righty. Bye-bye. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Melissa. Leave Thanks, it, Melissa. Leave it to the director, Justin. He's always ready and prepared just in case. Bring water, bring shade, bring what you need to put <laughs> So make sure. Stay but you know what? It's hot. It's, though. Hot. it's, it's really hot. Yeah. It's yeah. hot. I'm on my third bottle of water already. Yeah. yeah so I can I can drink that much it's water because yeah, they get we get bloated. But yeah, um, talking about the the majorettes, there were there were, there were other majorettes. Uh, there wasn't St. Clair majorettes per se, but there were other groups. Um, sparkle twirlers, something like that, used to be called. Yes, sparkle light twirlers. Sparkle if I'm light not mistaken. Twirlers, yeah. Yes. And um, I haven't. Well, you know, it's been it's been a couple of years. I wonder if they if they're back in the parade because not for. the competitive reasons but they were doing good they were yeah. growing and growing yeah, faster it was, yeah, it's a different majorettes. vibe it's true definitely yeah um, but we have melissa with uh mr ian turnbull for division of festivals oh that's ian yeah I, that's ian i never seen him in person i only <laughs> see him in, in <laughs> yep so we get to hear a little <laughs> a bit from picture. ian melissa let's take it away okay so ian the man with the plan <laughs> mr turnbull how are you doing today i'm good i'm good i'm good how, good. how are you I'm wonderful. I'm wonderful. So tell me, you're seeing the beginning. The, we're like the beginning, but like the ending of of, of of festival. It's Children's Parade. How is everything going? Everything has been going very, very well. Um, we've had um, uh, what eight, eight or seven village nights. We've had a princess show, queen show, food fair, juve, and it's all been very, very awesome. People have been coming out in droves. Um, you know, the team is tired, but, you know, this is last lap in, in our eyes. You know, today's Trans Parade, we have a cruise ship in town. Couldn't get it any better. I feel like a, just a B12 shot, you know, a little sleep. Maybe maybe lean on a Red Bull and a Bush tea later. Yeah. I think I think you could make it last couple. We got, what, two more days. We got two more days. Two more, two more days. I actually take the, the, the B12 pills that dissolve in your mouth. So I take like five of them. Pop up. <laughs> to keep yourself yeah, together, yeah. to keep yourself together. So this is your, this is, is this your full, your first full festival in ten years? No, actually, um, this is my second. So, so the division of festivals, um, first festival, um, was in 2019, 2020. Um, you know, we pulled it off. Um, it, it was epic, 
And then, um, you know, this is the second one. We finally had St. Thomas in 2022, um, April 2022. Finally had St. John in, in June, July of April of 2022. And so St. Croix, this is their second soiree, with us at least. Um, and it's been going good. It's been going good. All righty. So anything uh, new that you could say that Division of Festivals has brought to the different festival seasons? I would say um, just the marketing, um, you know, just, just trying to tap into bringing people, more people to us. Um, so, so that component is a lot different. Um, we're youthful as well. So we're doing um, some cool things where we're collaborating with the old and, 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 you know, bringing the old and new and merging those two worlds together. Um, and then, you know, we have great, great committee, committee members who are putting on excellent events um, up in the ante with those, their events. Um, Princess Show was upped. You know, um, Queen show was upped, Calypso show was upped, um, you know, and, and so just, just having fun and doing, doing what we need to do, making sure that the world knows that the U.S. Virgin Islands um, has three reasons to fet, and just so happens in December, it's St. Croix party time, right? Awesome. Here with the director of Division of Festivals, Mr. Ian Turnbull, wishing you a safe and happy and a, a, a B12 <laughs> filled <laughs> festival. All right, it's Shaniqua Dotson. <laughs> Thank you, Melissa. <laughs> this is a B12 festival. B12, boy. <laughs> the mother said B complex and done. Uh, and then she mixed it with Red Bull. She's <laughs> 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 some bread. She easy. Lord said help. So if, she, if we see Melissa start running up and down this afternoon, we know, we know, you know it finally kicked in. Oh, she'd be charged. Yeah, but Ian told me yeah, Ian told me had a rough time. But you know, like you said, we, we, we got the, 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 the three celebrations festival. What do you, you call it? Festival or carnival? I still call it festival. So St. Croix is festival. It's festival. St. Yeah. Thomas is carnival. Yeah. St. John is carnival. Carnival also. St. John yeah. is carnival. But I remember I remember a few years back there was a discussion they yeah. were trying to cast no, St. Croix. St. Croix was carnival for yeah. one of the years. I don't yeah. remember. Yeah, but I I never call it that. I, I don't remember. But yeah, they they did shift it. They changed it. Yeah, and then they changed it back. Yeah, we yeah. festival. They changed it. Oh, back. We got the best. We, we got the best time of the year to have a festival. I ain't, I ain't knocking kind of a no in Saint Thomas. Don't get vexed with me. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that always happens during. It's a the, touchy subject. Yeah, touchy. But it happens during the most wonderful time of the year. Christmas. Yes. You know yes. what I mean? So, yes. I mean, you it's like two for that. one. Yeah. We really, we really have an advantage. Yeah, we get a bunch of holidays at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to stay home and rest. <laughs> exactly. We have a wonderful time. It's a perfect time for vacation, though. Like for family. Yeah. So it, it, yeah. it, it, it we do have, it, it, it does fall in a good time frame for us. It does. Okay, let's we go down to George in a few seconds because I, I oh boy, I wonder what he's coming with this time. Listen, George, you I don't know. There. George, George will be pulling stuff out his sleeves. Yeah, so you just never know what you're gonna get. But, but I'm telling you, I'm concerned though. Oy. His energy at this point usually comes at the end or during the middle of our parade. Oh, and the energy he has right now it might be a little too much later on. He may explode. You think so? <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> as long as he don't crush. So let's and see what George have in store for us right now. Take it away, George. We ready? We nearly there. Oh yes, once again, Cloud of Marco, Big Island, St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands is all about children's parade. It's all about the festivities over here during festival. And I'm telling you, it's feeling good. I'm feeling great. I'm very excited to get down the road. And I came by here and I saw some people. I don't know if they have the driver's license or what, but they're enjoying themselves. Yes. Hello, ladies. Are you ready? Yeah. They're ready to go without a doubt. Let's find out some names here real quick. What's your name? Delilah. Delilah. Nia. Zaria. Emery. Oh boy, they're doing beautiful. And can somebody tell me what's the name of this troop? USB. USB. You got it right there. And I'll tell you what, we have somebody who came all the way from the States to make sure she was outside with us this festival. How you doing? How you feeling? I'm feeling great. How are you guys doing this morning? Excellent. Let me ask you something about what's the temperature of the place that you just now came from? Um, it warmed up a little bit this week, but last week when we left, it was about 9 degrees. <laughs> what's warmed up? 20, 30 degrees. <laughs> Welcome to the U.S. Virgin Islands. I know you're smiling and enjoying yourself. I'm actually a Crucian born, but we uh, migrated and now we live in Georgia. So you're enjoying being thawed out now? Yes. We're not that out. And let's go over here because one thing we love, we love to see the fathers involved as we are here in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Morning, morning. How you doing? I good, I good. How you doing? So you're going to be driving this? You're going to be pushing it? What are you doing? Okay, yeah, I'm the, I'm the driver. This is a new business that we just started okay. in the Tropical Al Excursion. Okay. It's um, brought to you by Jungle James, the Petting Zoo. 
So we're gonna be driving it behind the behind the troop to make sure anybody too tired, they got a little space, we could jump them on <laughs> the road, you know. Hey, I don't like the way how we say anybody too tired because for those who don't know, for those who might be St. Thomas, St. Julian who never got over here, we all the way by Claro Marco School. The parade road all the way about 15 minutes down the road, you know. But I know they energize and I know they're gonna keep ready to go without a doubt, right? Yeah, for sure. We uh, we ready with the little ones, they hype they hype. And you hype too? Yeah, man, I hype. We ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, back to you. We there, ya, St. Croix. We there, ya. <laughs> yes, George. Yes, we there, we there. I'm surprised since we there. No, no, you can't do that in St. Croix. We there, ya. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite dish, food wise? Really? Yeah. That's I come back, I came back, yes. Okay, I, I come back, I, okay, we'll get back to that in a second. That's a you know about me and food. We will talk now. <laughs> but let's uh, take it away. Hi. Okay, sorry. Hi there. All righty then. I am here with Kathy. And Kathy is off of, is it the Royal Caribbean? Am I, am I saying that right? No, the Celebrity Silhouette. Cebr celebrity Silhouette. They are here uh, on the island of St. Croix during the parade. And she's came down with her family and she's sitting down. I mean, she's not going to any of the excursions. She wants to see what's going on with the parade. Yep. So tell me, what have you seen so far? What do you like? Oh, all the beautiful colors in your fabrics and the big smiles on the people and, and the guys on the stilts. I love it. Mocha Jumbies. That's what, that's what those, those are called. Mocha yeah. Jumbies. Learn a little bit about the culture. That's what we're here for. Okay, good, 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 good. I appreciate that. So um, have you had a chance to go into any of the vendors and taste any of the foods? Have not tasted the food, and that's what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> I'll point you in the right and direction. Any if you have any good drinks. Oh, yes, yes. I, I, we will do that off camera. They don't have to know our business. They don't have to know our business, Kathy. We'll, we'll, we'll go. We'll do a little voyage. We'll do a little voyage. Well, I appreciate you. I thank you so much. Please, uh, if, how long are y'all here? Just for the day? Just for the day. Okay, so whenever you uh, take advantage of the food, come back and let me know what you love. Okay, thank you. And thank you for allowing us to visit in your beautiful country. Thank you so much. All righty. More from WTJX and the Cruising Christmas Festival Children's Parade. Thank All you, right. Melissa. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we're back the, again. The guests are enjoying themselves. They're already lined up. They're already securing their spot to view the parade. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize it, but this is another time of the year again that we do have a cruise ship in town. Yes. We don't normally have cru the cruise ships during parade, but it's been happening quite often, and it, it gives it gives it gives the visitors, this people on the cruise ship, an opportunity to see how we celebrate. Oh yeah. I think Saint Croix is the only place in the world mm -hmm. that are really and truly celebrate the 12 days of christmas we don't <laughs> stop <laughs> because in, in, in america you got you got christmas day the next day is december 26th that's that's used to be our big house racing day yes people taking on the christmas tree we putting up more lights <laughs> you know what I'm but but, but that's, just getting started we're just getting started but that's just that's the great thing about living here now getting back to i came down yesterday when i tell you come to come to the food sale mm -hmm. food fair yesterday we had like an alternate site for food fair because people down here in the booths open up mm -hmm. i got sauce i got rose i got stew goat and mm -hmm. i got crab and rice now that's not that, that's not to say that's my favorite the uh -huh. color is my favorite but i was able to get something like that yesterday because i was buying food for other people what's your favorite i i am a seafood lover yeah and I could eat saltfish every single day. Serious? It don't matter how you do it. Brown sauce, bread sauce, chop up, wow, butter sauce. Wow, it, I okay. could eat saltfish. I love kank too. Yeah, so when I, I came here, kank. I have to shout out WTJX because I was going to call Marcelina. I was like, hey, um, I need to get some bread and cheese. I need to stop in for some food before I come here. When I reached in the back, May eat it. A crucian breakfast back there, you know that's it. Yeah, I, I ate already, it. and I'm gonna eat again. Okay, like as soon okay. as we go on break, I go for more. Yeah, we got crucian break. breakfast with all the trimmings. The banana fritters are mouth watering. Wow. So wow. I, I they already got me sold. I I trying to look work with Channel Twelve moving forward. We got the crucian <laughs> breakfast in the morning. Yeah. With the bush tea, they have the fruits. Yeah. Everything set up. So for me, I, I'm a seafood lover, so I could eat kank too. I like kank. I, I love, yeah. I, I, love I like kank. Yeah. I could eat kank with You know, you know what I'm not big on? You know, and I, I, you, get a, you get a lot of this in St. Thomas, and I yeah. guess I, get, I need to go to St. Thomas to experience it better. And the, the Christians don't get vexed at me, but I just, I'm not, I am not a big fan of Wilkes. I don't know why. Of what? Wilkes. Wilkes? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. First of all. I say similar to kank, but. It mm, could be, yeah, but I, first of all. You mean a fan either? No, I, and, 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 and Wilkes will done the gas in your house, you know, you know that. Try to try to get up. <laughs> Young guy, use a pressure cooker. <laughs> <laughs> you tried to boil he and he and he fighting your he fighting your gas tank. So in other words, as soon as you, soon as you get to the end of your gas tank is when he decide okay, oh nice no. up. But oh it's, no. it's really robot. But I but I I hear you know I I don't know why it is. I, I guess I didn't grow up on it much. I grew up more on tank and fish and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know my 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 family would you know every Saturday it was always fish and fungi. I mean make it wait this every Saturday. 
whether it's boiled fish or fried fish, but it had to have fish and fungi every Saturday. Okay, but we'll get back to the food topic. Yeah. We're getting ready down here. We're setting up, but we're going to go to a short break. Short break. We're going to go to a children's costume making workshop. VI costume makes. We're going we're gonna to be showing you what's called the VI costume making. Yes. Um, probably similar to what happened in Trinidad, in Brazil, in those places. But we do our own thing. Some folks may say that uh, we copy. We don't copy. We just make things better. That's all we do here in the Ooh. Virgin Islands. So we'll be right back. Weekly, your guest host for this particular series on costuming. Uh, today, we're going to be talking to costume designers Arid Lockhart, Ms. Simone Edwards, and Mr. Alfred Haynes about costuming, about carnival, and all the interesting things involved in the craft. So, your name is synonymous with carnival, with costumes, with culinary. At what age did you realize that this was something you wanted to pursue? Well, I was in the sixth grade. And I had an interest, used to assist my aunt in uh, making a lot of costumes I was going to associate. And then in uh, seventh grade, I began a children troupe. And then in the tenth grade, because of my interest in carnival, uh, my father, the late Alfred Lockhart, took me to Trinidad. And then from there, that was it. But with the Elsko and Associates troupe, you know, you, you don't tend to see as much skin as some of the other troops. Is that deliberate? Uh, I would say yes, because uh, we use two-piece co uh, costume, but we try to avoid uh, bikinis. And then we use one piece. And then for the older people, we'll have like a sheer skirt which you put on. So we try to accommodate the difference in both ages. What is the anatomy of a costume? Like, you know, First, you identify the pattern, and then you choose what um, you know materials you're gonna you do put on it. And how do you go about thinking about the construction of the costume? Well, first of all, you have to come up with your design. Uh, we'll sit down and discuss an idea, and as a designer, I will then uh, do sketches. After we have done the sketches and we are body agree on it, we then make templates for the prototype. Then we make the prototype, which is a sample costume. Then you, you do a photo shoot, and then you present it to the public, and then people can sign up. And then after that, you into mass production. Tell our viewers what a mass camp is. Okay, a mass camp is where you make your costumes in general. About 20 or 30 years ago, when we got into it uh, with the Trinidad style, we used to have a seamstress, but they would be in one location. We need something like five or six seamstress we had. We got a time, we had like 500 people in the troop. And then the actual mass camp, the production of the head piece and the big costumes and stuff was at a different site. Within there now, we had tables set up and different stations. Some people were cutting patterns. Some people were bending wire. That's the wire bending. And then others were covering and decorating. So as a costume designer, um, you know, would you encourage people to get involved more in this art form? Um, I think there's so much more you can do, you know, outside of just the festival time with the skills you gain as a costume designer. Um, and, you know, is that something you would encourage more of? Well, I would encourage it, yes. I knew in, um, you do work in. I taught arts and crafts, and within that class, I showed them how to make the masks. Uh, we made miniature mukujumbis and different things like that. So that's a way of carrying it on outside of Carnival. And at the same time, it was uh, a craft. You were teaching to carry on the craft as well, because Carnival is not just a mass and music. It's your whole culture, your crafts, uh, your culinary art, and your different things. Okay, so this is the 69th um, 
anniversary of Carnival next year will be the 70th, 70th the platinum years. Um, have you started thinking about next year? Well, not really, because um, I figured would have used what we should have uh, used last year because most troops already had the costumes and made and so forth. But I guess being that it's platinum, I might have to put that idea in the back burner and do something just for the occasion. Are you ready to show me a little bit of the basic uh, traditional elements of costume making? Yes. I'll show you. Sounds good. I see you have laid out here some traditional elements of the costume. So let's start with some of the equipment that we need. Like, I see you got a hot glue gun, and I think behind you, you there's some wire. What's this, spray glue? Yeah, this is spray glue. Okay. And so your materials, do you source the materials locally, or do you do you get them from our island? Okay, well, um... I try to source material locally and braids. And if I cannot get them, then I go off island. Okay, and, and is the selection pretty much, you know, is the selection good or you find that, um, you know, you have a challenge with, with the selection? No, well, the, uh, the selection is good because uh, the basic lames and stuff that most people use, they carry. And then when you get in sometime, you go into the, the shop, I might see a piece of lace, I will buy the lace, cut it, cut it up, and make patterns. And sometimes I use the lace as is. As lace, okay. So let's let's start with this headpiece right here. Okay, so this is a completed headpiece. But I think you have some of the de deconstructed elements of this headpiece. So walk me through what the making of this headpiece would be. Okay, first of all, you get a molding. But then, but does it come like that? No, it comes in a sh it comes in a sheet about two or three in a sheet, and so you have to cut it, cut it out and mold it to a head. No, it comes molded already. Oh, okay. We ordered from the company, the plastic company in Trinidad. Then after we have cut it out, then we spray the spray glue on this portion here, apply the fabric, and then cut the fabric. After that, we then uh, cut our this uh, half moon shape, and that's put on to this part here. It's glued on from the back. Then we put our uh, contact cement onto that, contact cement onto the feathers, and then you glue them down on it, and it, then we uh, seal it with masking tape. That would look something like this hat here, which I uh, kind of uh, took apart so you could get the idea. You can see the tape and the glue in there. And where you see the white in the hat, that's where you call it, your frontal goes on, which is a pattern that's decorated and everything. And this is what you end up with when you put on your frontal. And then that would be the completed headpiece in a short time. And, and sh should this headpiece be able to last beyond one carnival? Yes, if you take care of it. If you take care of it. Yeah, I've had people have headpiece um, 15, 20 years. Yep. And, and, you know, in talking about the um, durability of, of these things, you know, I think there was been discussions about a uh, carnival museum. And, you know, I, I, we wish that we could see that come to fruition, you know. Um, do you think that there are a lot of people on island who have costumes, you know, dating back years that would be able to be a part of the museum? Uh, yes, I do. I know at one time the Carnival Committee in the old white dilemma building across from Finance and Main Street, they had a mini museum. I donated a costume and some wireframes and stuff to them. And I think the costume I donated was called Kalalu. Okay, nice. So let's talk about some of the other materials you have here on the table. Um, is this some kind of contact paper? Okay, this is prism paper. It, uh, you, it has a gum back and uh, you peel it off and you stick it on. Usually we stick it on foil and so forth. And when the uh, lights hit it, give good reflection. Right, right. Uh, these are the different types of feathers here. These some people call puff feathers because... Uh, like ostrich. 
when you shake it up, see now how wide it opens? So they call oh, yeah, it puff. Yeah, when yeah. the breeze hit it, mm -hmm. it opens up. These are ostrich plumes. You can get these up to like three, four, five feet, depending on what you're playing. This car coxcomb from the rooster tail. Okay, right, right, right. Turkey feathers. Pheasant. Uh, this is an actual plume, and what do you do? They trim it down and then call it nandu. And you can get it in different size and color. Yeah. And feathers, I mean, do most of your costumes include feathers? Well, um, depends on what you're depicting. Like the year after the uh, double whammy hurricanes. <laughs> We uh, just did something, uh, most of the, it was uh, flowers and stuff because they talk about re rebirth, new beginning. And to uh, attract the younger people, they put a little bit of feather in it. Okay. I think the design might be in the pile that you have there with the pictures. Gotcha. Let's look at the boots now because the boots are pretty stylish. Okay. Um, this particular costume was the year we played uh, Carnival is mass and music. And the colors which you can see was like fuchsia, orange, black, white, red. And this were the boots that the uh, queen of the band wore. These are boots. And that's a regular pair of boots that you just cover with yeah. feathers and sequins and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Yeah. And sometimes in uh, decorating, you might use you, uh, like this one with Spice. It's actually a applique for the yoke of an evening gown. Okay, okay. So sometimes I incorporate different things. Nice, nice. Now you have some wire, and I think wire bending is an important part of the costume making or certain costumes. Okay, yeah, for the uh, bigger or you say uh, characters or section leaders, we use wire and fiberglass. No, fiberglass. It actually can give you flexibility, makes the costume lighter. The wire is what you actually have to bend. This is our 12 gauge wire. Then we also have 10 and 8 gauge wire. The heavier wires are for making like a jacket and so forth. Mm -hmm. And then you also have aluminum tubing that is used to give you your straights, which is your support. Okay, this is the aluminum tubing. It comes in different widths. Yeah. And then the uh what we call backpacks, which they are now using and are making now, is this. It's made out of aluminum. Some people make out of wire. You can see the aluminum. And uh, also that's the, uh, how we apply the uh, rods to the bigger jacket. We use uh, what we call strap and tape. Long ago, everything was uh, soldered or, or welded. So we have come a long way. And the strap, is the strap and tape as, as sturdy as the welded? Yes, it is. Yes, yes, yes. And so is this for the big, big costumes? No, that's for what we call a backpack for a floor member. Okay, a backpack for a floor member. Okay. Okay, so here we have a couple of your designs. Maybe we could just talk about, you know, like... If you, re you know, you remember these and... Well, uh, this one in particular, again, is called First Light. That was from the hurricane again. When I went outside, believe it or not, I had blooms on my flowers. Really? I mean, flowers blooming on my trees, like the hibiscus after, tree. After Irma? And yes, and then they, uh, we had uh, birds coming around, so that's how we got the idea. Mm -hmm. So this was called First Light. And the, this one was uh, the beginning stage of our trilogy, which you can see is uh, music, sweet music. And this one was called Mass and Music, which is this section here. This head piece and things that I showed. Uh, this is, uh, I have designed sometimes. I just sit down, draw, and do things and put down. And then if somebody comes along, and this is one that I drew, this is called Show Girls. And this was the section for the year after the hurricane, which you can see we bought. New beginning, your flowers, leaves, 
boards and stuff, and that this is, was the idea that went along with the other costume. Okay, now, so you have a warehouse full of all of this um, materials and, you know, co older costumes and... Well, to be honest, I have a warehouse where I store the materials and different things, but to store the older costume, you'll need a big, humongous warehouse. So right, we right, usually, right. Um, after a year or so, or a year and a half, we strip them down, and you could recycle exactly. aluminum and fiber glass. Okay, great. Well, this, is, this was a very educational for me. Um, I really have been to a mass camp, but not to actually help to put together a, a costume. Yeah. But this, this was the year when we saw uh, folklore mm -hmm. with Anansi, which is the inner section. Uh, Peacock Maidens, this one was Oriental folklore. Uh, that year, we had the flow with the spider coming out the, uh, the Dortmund with a little hole. And I was dealing with folklore from around the world. And so, just in wrapping up, you know, can you identify like your most creative? You think you could choose your most creative uh, set of costumes? Well, the one that I was most creative will be the one that I made. First, for my brother, he won Junior King Hair, which is fish out of water. That's a costume. I then, uh, my friends from Trinidad asked permission to reproduce it for Labor Day in New York. They did it, it one up there. Okay. And then I reproduced it the year for the VI Carnival Queen for Antigua and it one down there. Okay, so fish out of water. Yes. Okay, well, we need to see fish out of water, you know? Too bad you didn't bring fish out of water. Uh, well, uh, I had the drawing, but it was uh, kind of faded. I don't think you would pick it up. Okay, not a problem. Well, this has been very interesting, Alred. I want to thank you. I want to encourage uh, people in the community to, you know, if they're creative or, you know, just want to do something like crafty and try to also keep a tradition alive to, you know, reach out to the troops and the costume makers to see if they could, you know, help and see, you know, whether or not this is something they're interested in continuing. I want to thank you, Albert, for sharing your information about costuming, about carnival, and all the interesting things involved in the craft. We also had the opportunity to talk to Ms. Simone Edwards and Mr. Alfred Haynes. Here is what they had to say. You started out in fashion. How did you transition into costume designing? Well, I guess that transition came very um, late in my career when I moved back home to St. Thomas. And there was no industry as a merchandiser. So I took my fashion design ability and applied it to costume design. So you remember your first collection? Yes, I do remember the first collection. Uh, it it was it was um, scary, but and scandalous. But we did what we had to do, and everybody was like, "Y'all ain't coming to roll like that." And I'm like, "Yes, we are." So. It but, was beautiful. But you also came up in that parade, Correct. right? Because I don't know, do all the costume designers actually come up in the parade? Yes, I did. Because yeah. I was like, okay, Daryl, I don't care. I have to be part of this parade. And he said, Al, it's, it's all about you. Do what you got to do. And then you had an opportunity to learn about wire bending. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I learned about wire bending the first year I was with Infernos um, from Mr. Godfrey. I, I don't know Godfrey's last name, but also Derek. Uh, Derek, they used to bend for uh, Lockhart and Associates, and. Our mass camp was up at between, uh, right there by the USO, and Derek mass camp was down at the Windward Hotel. And he would always bring me treasures, okay, because he knew that I would, you know, Godfrey and them was going to, he was like, ah, 
you all need to teach Al how to bid. And that's how I learned to bid. And where do you see costume making going in the next five or 10 years? We've changed from the old standards to wide bending. And I would like to see us go back to, it could be a little short skirt, you know, madras, you know, some eyelid, you know, pull it up on the side, look cute. You had a highlight in your life when you actually went to the Smithsonian Institute, I think it's the Institute for Folklore. Um, yes. Tell us a little bit about that and the costuming that you did for that. Well, I, when I went to, this was, I think, 20, 2013. And uh, I didn't know what to expect. You know, I, I got to D.C. and there were 3,000 different designers from, you know, all over the world. And we, we were on the mall and we had each had a little village. And I met President Obama for the first time in my life. And we, we were hosted for dinner at the White House. This was the most incredible adventure of my life. Because who would have thought that a little black boy from the U.S. Virgin Islands would be having a costume place in the Smithsonian, you know. Well, I want to thank you for your time, Mr. Haynes, and we look forward to your costume designs in 2022. Well, God, God's willing, if I'm here, you always see me on stage. So now we have the youngest member of our panel, uh, Miss Simone Edwards from Real Mass Troop. Nice to see you. Likewise. So uh, how long has it been since you started Real Mass? Real Mass, we're in 2021. This would have been year 14, I believe. And you were the one that started the troop. <laughs> believe it or not, I didn't even realize. Yes, it and, was that. And that what one. was it that prompted you to move out of one troop and start your own troop? Um, I've always had an affinity to costuming, uh, design, um, and I've always, I've traveled, you know, to various carnivals and whatnot. So I think the, the jump for me was, I didn't necessarily see a costume on the road that I wanted to wear. Right. So right. I think that's where the jump came in. Okay. Yes. And what was it that you thought was missing from those costumes versus like what you do? Um, I felt like we started, it was just repetitive. So I just felt like it was not that it wasn't nice. It was just stuff that we were seeing over and over and over. And, um, you know, there's a market for everyone. And I just didn't feel like there was a market for me and my friends. <laughs> and, and so the troupe you were in prior to starting Real Bass, uh -huh. were you costuming? Were you making costumes? Or how did you transition into actually making the costumes? So the troupe locally that I was in, because I've done carnival throughout the Caribbean, the troupe locally that I was in, I don't, I don't even believe that they were making their own costumes. So I think those costumes were bought and then they were probably um, embellished, like, you know, um, but just deconst I have deconstructed costume over the years. Uh, traveling to do carnival, you, you always get a costume in the right size and whatnot. So I've always had to make alterations to, you know, costumes and whatnot. So deconstructing costumes, I was like, I could do this, like, you know. Um, and so I was like, and really the, the, the word or the name Real Mass came from the commitment to actually do the costumes, like to actually produce the costumes. So it is, that's why it's called Real Mass. Interesting, yes. interesting. So I've heard conversations about your generation and beyond mm -hmm. really not um, embracing our culture and our traditions and our heritage. Do you agree with that? Um, I don't think you could put everybody in the same basket. Carnival has, you know, a lot of aspects to it. And so some people might not enjoy or might not be interested in one part but they're interested in a, another part, just depending on your interests or the interests of your family. 
Um, and some people just love the time of year because it's just a party, you know? Right, right, right. Um, so I don't think you could put everybody in the same bucket to say that the generation doesn't have an appreciation. Um, I think some people haven't been exposed to the cultural aspect of it, um, the theory, where it came from, what it really represents for Caribbean people, what it represents for Virgin Islanders, the real rebellious side of carnival, the origin. Um, and so I think it may be a lack of awareness, a lack of education, but not necessarily that they're just not, you know, in tune. In tune. Yeah. Right. And so in your um, troop, do you have any, you know, young people <laughs> actually learning how to construct a costume? Most definitely. So I am probably outside of my parents because they are actively involved in um, in real mass. Outside of my parents, maybe one or two. I'm probably the oldest. Everybody else is, you know, younger than I am. I won't give my age, but, um, <laughs> okay. you know, everybody else is younger than I am. And some people came, like, when they saw, you know, right now, Real Mass is like a family. Like, even when we don't have mass camp, we gather for for birthdays and, and barbecues and all kinds of stuff. But um, a lot of our production team, when they came, they didn't necessarily come with, you know, the skill set, so to speak. And so it was you know, workshops, and this is how you do this. So a lot of the production was learned as you go along. So um, I would say that through Real Mass, we've actually cultivated a group of young people that now know how to construct costume from scratch. That's mm. excellent. That's excellent. Mm. What are you looking forward to for 2022? Well. When Carnival is back <laughs> coming up the streets. Yeah. Um, I'm a themer, so uh, I, I released, um, what year was it? I don't even know the year, 2019? It was 2019? 2020. Um, I released early March, March 2nd, I think it was, and then the island shut down March 13th, Friday, March 13th, right? So... All those prototypes and everything, they're just in the room watching me. So I'm excited about the 2022 theme, uh, Real Mass 2022 theme. I'm super excited about that because um, it's already conceptualized. Um, and I'm just I'm just excited to, you know, be able to have the kind of fellowship that we have during Carnival. It's, it's the most exciting time of the year for me. Um, I have friends from all over that travel. I have friends that they, they're regular fetos and they came to St. Thomas Carnival and just wanted to come back and come back and come back. So I enjoy even doing, you know, that kind of entertainment. So Well, it should be a great time in 2022 because I think everybody is, is so anxious to get back mm -hmm. to, you know, Carnival yeah. and, the, and the spirit that comes with Carnival. So. And it's a big year. And it's a big year. Yes. It is the 70th anniversary yes. of Carnival. Mm -hmm. So... I want to thank you, Ms. Simone Edwards from Real Mass, for joining this conversation and costuming. Thank you. And again, the Division of Festivals wants to get everybody excited about the platinum anniversary <laughs> of Carnival in yes. 2022. Yes. So thank you for having me. Thank you.